I started riding when I was seven years old. I actually didn't know that this sport existed. I didn't know about jumpers. I didn't know anything about horses whatsoever. I just wanted to try riding a pony for fun. And there was this really uh, small barn near our country house in New Jersey that we used to drive by every weekend. And one day I just said to my dad that I wanted to try it. So I started with just one lesson. I think it was freezing cold that day. <laughs> And then uh, the following weekend I went back and then it became two lessons on the weekends and then I just rode more and more and more and I loved every minute of it. I never actually did pony hunters. I never competed at, like at, in this kind of circuit until I was 13 years old and I moved to Beacon Hill. So before that I was doing very local New Jersey horse shows and I remember my parents and I used to think that people who went to horse shows every weekend were crazy. And then we ended up being one of them. <laughs> we, I remember, we, I, I distinctly remember this conversation, like who would want to go to a horse show every weekend? That's crazy. Don't you have anything better to do with your time? <laughs> kind of thing. I balanced school and riding pretty much my whole riding career, um, especially in high school. My high school was very intense. Uh, so I really got used to having to do both really well, the riding and also the schoolwork. The flexibility that I had at Yale with scheduling my classes two or three days a week was actually a lot more flexibility than I had in high school. So I felt very prepared for Yale actually and it wasn't as difficult as I feared. There have been a lot of times when I felt like I didn't have what it takes or you know that I was never going to figure it out no matter how hard I tried because I, I do try really hard like every day when I come to the barn and I ride I really try to focus and give my horse the best you know and make sure that I'm really focusing and trying and learning from my mistakes and stuff like that. Um, there were several times when I seriously considered quitting like I felt like I'll, I'm never going to figure it out I'm never going to get it why, why, why am I doing this? I, I'm, I don't have what it takes and you know, maybe I should try to find something that I'm actually more naturally good at. And there have been a lot of those times. And it was like a, it was like a huge like deal for me every time, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. every time was like, I was like crying. Like, I mean, it wasn't like, oh, I don't really want to do this anymore. It was like, I was having like a crisis. There's three things. First, I don't like to give up. Second, I really love horses and I enjoy competing and I enjoy jumping and I enjoy spending time with my horses so I could never really leave the sport because I just want to be with my horses. And the third is I had a super special horse, a once in a lifetime horse and I wasn't going to stop riding him. I've trained with Scott Brash, Mario Delorier, Paul Chocomola, Ian Miller, John Madden, Rodrigo Pessoa. And Todd Minicus helped me as well a little bit. In, in my jump offs, there's this one thing that Todd told me once and it changed my whole outlook on riding. He said, just leg through the turn. And I think any, like, I'm sure tons of trainers say that, but for some reason when Todd said it to me, it clicked in a way that it never had before and it never has since. And so I just remind myself, okay, remember what Todd said in that turn. And that happens with, you know, things that Paul taught me, things that Mario taught me, things that Rodrigo taught me. And so I kind of pull from what, what clicked for me to try to put together a really good Grand Prix round. <laughs> uh, I started managing my horses with a barn manager, of course, um, about three and a half years ago now. Uh, when I kind of made my own operation. I still had a trainer who was very involved, but the actual management was sort of my responsibility. And it was a lot of, it was a lot of work that I'd never done before that because I'd always just boarded with my trainer. Uh, but I think it's made me a much better rider, a much better horse person. I learned a lot of stuff and I'm, I still continue to learn, but the amount of things that I know now about horses and what they need and how to optimize their health and their fitness and their happiness. It's really just made me better at understanding the horses and what I can do to help them perform at their best. I really enjoy science a lot and there is a lot of science to the sport like both um, you know how the horse moves that's all like biomechanics and stuff like that and then also just the biology side, you know, like what you're feeding them and how you're training them and everything. And it's been nice to be able to like combine the sciencey side that I like with 
than getting results in the ring and figuring out how to you know, get your horse to be on, like, at his best on that day. Like I've talked to a lot of vets and chiropractors and stuff to learn about that stuff, but also I've done research on my own to sort of learn like, how does the horse's digestive system work so that I can kind of understand what they're going through and how to get them ready for a competition and how to or manage stress when traveling and stuff like that. My biggest riding goal is to go to the Olympics in 2020. They'll be in Tokyo, so if I'm selected, I'll be riding for the home team. And I was also born in, in Tokyo, so it'll be really special for me if I get to go. So in, um, in 2018, there's the WEG, and then later that year, the Asian Games. So those are two big championships that I also have on my radar and hope to be able to go to as well. This is what I hate about contacts because they never bother me when I'm just at home chilling, but when I'm like doing an interview or when I'm schooling for the class, they're always like messed up. <laughs>